I'm sure many of you have had to spend many, many more hours working online since the COVID pandemic. But I'd also guess that many of you have also been online for entertainment, seeking out your family and friends or exercise classes or shopping or films or dramas on screen during lockdown. Maybe you're one of the millions like Professor Deidre Butler to have discovered The Queen's Gambit on Netflix, a fictional account of a female grandmaster in the world of chess. Our next speaker, Judith Polgar, is a real-life female chess grandmaster, European from Hungary. She has lots to say about the role chess can play in education, and particularly the power of chess in children's cognitive development. She's here now. Welcome, Judith. Hi. I would like to welcome everybody at the third European Education Summit. I'd like to talk to you about the power of chess in education and my experiences to that. I was growing up in a very special family as my parents are also teachers and they had very special idea how to raise me and my sisters. When I was born they were sure that I'm going to be already a chess champion. And at the age of five I was already playing chess and my mother taught me the first few moves and very shortly after that, this language, the chess language, it became as my mother tongue. And also later on, I figured it out that actually it's a common language all over the world where I travel. In the beginning, I was starting only playing 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but later on it increased to many, many hours of training, of gaming. I was playing chess with my sister quite a lot. Sophia, who you see on the picture, she is a year and a half older than I am. And we played a lot of games and also blindfold games. But you see on the picture, you have to visualize the chessboard. And that's how we were playing, that we were not seeing the board and we could still call out the moves e4, c5, knight f3, because we could visualize the chessboard in our brain. And later on, not only blindfold games, but I was able to play simultaneous exhibitions. So simultaneous exhibition is a multitasking activity, actually. And usually who gives the simultaneous exhibition is much stronger than the opponent. We can play against the opponent of 20, 30, even 40 or more. But actually, if I think about it, Teachers are doing the same thing, right? They have a classroom with filled up with children, 20, 25, 30 children at the same time. So they, the teachers, have to be very well prepared. They have to be excellent teachers and great mentors to help them out quite a bit. Now I want to show you a painting, which is actually happens to be a chess position. So it depends how well you're informed about chess, how much are you, uh, know the chess position, the chess diagram, the chess pieces, how we see it, it, depending on that, you're going to be giving the right answer to me. Because actually, when I saw this artwork from a friend of mine who made it, Samuel uh, Havatoy, uh, I saw it, ah, oh, I know this position, and actually I know exactly what it is. So I'd like to challenge you a little bit, that what do you see in this artwork? Is it a white, beautiful artwork, which actually happens to be painted on antique laces? Or do you see something more? You see chess pieces, you see even which opening is it? And I like to show this artwork to kids also and children and to everybody, because here I can demonstrate very well how much important it is to have memory, but also pattern recognition but not less depending how much information we have about a certain thing and topic, here it's chess, you're going to give me the right answer or the rich answer. Because we always have an opinion about things, we always say things about something, but of course it depends how much information we have of that specific thing, right? So what I see and other many chess players, it is exactly this. And I also know that this is an opening called Benoni. So it is important what we know when we express our opinion. But chess is something special in many ways. 
So this one I just wanted to share with you because this happened to be at the lobby area of the European Parliament years back when I was visiting for the first time, I think, or maybe the second time. And chess is there everywhere. It has such a heritage of 1500 years in art and in many other aspects. So this is also actually an opening setup of a position. It's the French opening, a specific line. But actually, there are stones right there, white and black stones. And during my career, as I started to play when I was five, later on by the age of uh, 13, 14, 15, I gained so much experience and knowledge that I was able to play against the very best players not the very, very top, but already in the top 50 of the world. And by this time, uh, I was number one in the ladies' ranking list, uh, and I was there, standing there for 26 years. But my main goal was always to be and play with the best players, and actually they were men, almost all of them. There were not many ladies who were around, actually. I was the only one who reached in the top 10. And in this picture, you see Spassky, the world champion, who was actually one of the gentlemen who were treating me uh, similarly as other uh, chess players. But there were some situations when my opponents were not handling it so well. One of the opponents I beat, he was like hitting his head in the elevator, or some of the opponent didn't shake hands with me after the game. But I liked the challenges and I had to develop in many ways to be able to reach my goals. To have skills like patience, it was one of the most important perseverance, the fighting spirit, being self-critical. It is extremely important, not only in chess, but I believe every time, everywhere in the world. And uh, also how to handle loss or when we are not right, or even victory, how to handle it, how to do it the way that it will give you a push. And the next picture I like to share with you because it's one of the favorite pictures I have. Because here you see me with all guys around. And this time I was not more than 16 years old when it was one of the first events where really the top elite players were surrounded me. And uh, on this picture you see all the gentlemen are in the top 10 in the world that around this time or later, but they were already huge players at the time. And you also see Karpov, for example. Here you're going to see Anand. And actually Anand was the person who later on, a few years later, who said she's one of us. This was one of the nicest thing I ever received from my compatriots because it was quite some time until I was able to reach respectful position in the chess world. And uh, also, Vladimir Kramnik, he was also later a world champion, also Garry Kasparov. The reason I'm showing you this uh, picture with all these guys, because in the beginning, many of them, they did not believe that I'm capable of reaching very high results and compete with them. But actually, each and every one got a little painful loss at least once against me. So little by little, I could gain respect from my colleagues. And I did. But with Kasparov, I was not only fighting over the chessboard, but we did other things as well. And actually, the world champions I just mentioned to you, they are actually, they have some things in common. Of course, one of them that they are excellent chess players, but not only that. Also, they all make a lot of effort to have chess in education in their own countries, but moreover, generally, they are real ambassadors, I think, for chess in education, as they do believe that chess gives exceptional opportunities in the next gen for the next generation. But with Kasparov, actually, later on, we were fighting uh, in the chessboard, but also we started to uh, go kind of hand in hand and promoting and make serious steps in order to have really chess in schools to make it more efficiently. So when Kasparov was going to Brussels, he asked me and I joined him with the presentation and the initiative that how important chess in schools can be for the future generation. We also met and we had a great meeting with Andrela Vasilio and uh, who was at the time the Commissioner for Innovation, Education and Youth. 
So we were having a, a very deep discussion about that and she was extremely supportive on this meeting. And actually in the next slide, you're going to see that uh, our uh, visit to the European Parliament with Kasparov, it was pretty fruitful as some months is, well, more half a year later, in 2012, actually the written declaration was presented and uh, by the majority of the members of the European Parliament, they supported very much chess in school. And here you can read some parts of the declaration, but I would like to highlight that declaration has an aim to bring attention to chess as a teaching tool to schools. And also after having this declaration, they said the member states should be working out their own way how to develop and how to implement it in their own educational system. So many of us went home and of course this was a great push. And now I'd like to share with you what we had experienced in the European Parliament having the educational conference together with the ECU, European Chess Union, in 2016. So this conference was already about our progress. And I think it was a great conference from the point of view that many of us who were there, you can see we were more than 20, 25 people at the conference. We were sharing the experiences, the good practices, what the different countries has developed. And I can tell you already in 2016, there were plenty of great practices which worked very well already in their own environment, in their own country. And uh, just I'd like to highlight some of the countries who has great programs, Sweden, France, Hungary, Italy, Germany, Denmark, Spain, Norway, and many, many more countries, not only in Europe, actually, all over the world. You will always find a program running, which is very successful, connected to chess education. But we had many, many takeaways from this conference. It's not only that it was such an exceptionally fantastic experience to, to see one another, how we implemented in our own country in the last previous few years, but also it was interesting for me to see how many different kind of perspective chess can be implemented into the education. So I'd like to share with you two uh, two main uh, channels how to implement chess and how to understand it because I think it's extremely important for you to understand for decision makers for for everybody who is involved in forming the future education that all these different things and now we are talking about chess how it can be implemented because I love to talk about it I love to talk with decision makers, with Minister of Education, but of course it's very difficult for them to see how it can be implemented, how, what are the steps of it to be able to be uh, integrated into their own programs, into their own country. So I think it's very important to see two things. First of all, that there is an education, chess in education, where teachers are teaching kids in the classroom. So here I'd like to highlight for you just some of the things, how and what benefits they have if they have chess in the classroom. Because the teachers will not need to know the chess expertise kind of things, moves and, and puzzles and etc. They have to know the rules of the game. And with that they can implement and develop so many different skills, everyday skills what the children are needing. So social emotional skills development is going on every time. Responsibility, collaboration, how important is that nowadays? Cognitive development, verbal skills, arithmetic, motivation. Motivation, we should not underestimate. How difficult it is for teachers to motivate the kids. And of course, gamification, which is essentially modern education. And of course, it's the, one of the biggest challenge, I think, for teachers, how to motivate and challenge the kids. And I think with chess, it's an exceptional opportunity. 
But of course, this is only one way of having chess in education. I also like to highlight the other way. So I mentioned to you that there are at least two ways we have to understand how to implement it into the different educational systems. So the other one is the after school program, let's say. But the main idea is that the previous one I was telling about, it was about teachers, how they can use chess in the classroom. And the other one I like to highlight when a chess coach is happen to be in the classroom or after school program. And I think the main difference is we have to understand that what is the goal and the final goal is different. For a teacher, the goal is to get better in everything the child, to have a, a great understanding of everyday things, how they can be improving their skills for everyday life to grow up smart and be a good adult, right? For a chess coach, it's different. He can be very playful, very creative, and can give a lot of games to kids. But his goal or her goal will be to develop their chess skills, to make better puzzles, to understand more patterns, to play better, to raise possibly their ratings or play successful in a tournament. But for those who go to after school and get lessons from chess teachers, they also improve and get different kind of developments and skills. Just to name a few, logical thinking, pattern recognition is one of the strongest on the, over the chessboard. Decision making, we always have to make decisions, right? After every move, they have consequences. Problem solving is essential in everyday life, but also over the chessboard, it's constantly something that we have to deal with. Critical thinking, analytical skills, how important is that also to be self-critical and self-control. That's also something you have to learn through chess and visual thinking. But also I want to highlight that I don't want to say that one is better than the other one. Of course, if we put chess in schools in the hand of teachers, more kids will get the opportunity to benefit of it but also who is a chess teacher, he or she will have quite a lot of kids in the classroom or after school programs. But one has to complement each other. I think that's the best thing. And I think there are also different ways, other ways to implement chess into the education. But I think it's very important to understand that there are these two just basic idea that there are different ways, but there are chess coaches and the teachers, how and different ways they can use chess. Well, after this, actually, after my visit in 2011 with Kasparov in the European Parliament, not long after, actually, I established my foundation, the Judith Polgar Chess Foundation, where we have two core uh, core things what we are focusing on. One is how chess is uh, is connected into sport, science, art, and education. We also have a global chess festival annually where we present all the different aspects, how chess contributes to, to the world and to everything. But of course, now I want to talk about more about the education in focus, because that's the other thing what we are doing and developing in the last uh, well, seven, eight years already. And uh, with that, we want to share to the public in Hungary, but also all over the world, what kind of benefits it gives to children. And we also want to show it and like to show it in practice because it's so important. We developed the Judith Polgar method. And in Hungary, you can see on the map that actually there are different schools, about 500 schools who are involved in the program and using the program and it's all over everywhere around Hungary. And it's also very important for us for the last few years already to make research. We are working together, uh, Dr. Eva uh, Diarmati, a senior researcher who made quite a lot of research materials and tests on kids who are using the Chess Palace, the educational program of us, what we developed, teachers are using this method. So it's in school environment with the classroom. And also there were control groups who are not involved in any chess program. And actually the result was of the research 
that they perform, the kids who are involved in the Chess Palace program, they perform better than their peers in almost all areas of cognitive development. And this difference is statistically significant in number of areas as well. Just to say, they also tend to show better performance in verbal skills and arithmetic. So this is very important for us that it's not only the teacher's feedback, the kids who love it, and not last, not the, uh, the parents. We also get a lot of positive feedback by parents. But of course, the research is very important and we are developing the research methods and uh, we are going to be continuing from uh, next September because now because of the pandemic, it's extremely difficult to make tests. And now I want to show you just briefly what we do with our method, but I'd like to also highlight that this is only one. This, I just want to give you a little insight of it. But really in every country you have great methods and I think it would be great if there are different programs will cross countries and oceans. But generally, many countries have great and successful uh, programs. But I want to show you and talk about my program just a little bit for you to know and understand. The Chess Palace uh, got into the uh, elementary school program as an optional subject in Hungary. It, was, it is part of the curriculum in Hungary since 2013. And we are extremely proud of that, that already in 2015, with the program at the Frankfurt Book Fair, we were able to receive the Best European Learning Material Awards. In that, the most innovative educational program. So this we are very proud of, that uh, we did something that internationally it was acknowledged. By now, we have about 1,500 teachers who took our 30-hour course and 500 schools, what we know about more or less, which means also that uh, around this time already we have yearly 40,000 kids who are involved in the program. But also we developed the same methodology, but for their age group, it's for the kindergarten age group, it's called the chess playground, and uh, we start from age four to seven this program which is uh, exceptionally very close to my heart because I believe the kids, when they are five, six, they are the most sensitive on, on knowledge, on learning, on curiosity. And uh, they are much more free in uh, developing in many ways uh, compared to the school environment, I believe. And uh, for the kindergarten, I just uh, show a few things what we have. We developed booklets for the kids also game cards, also syllabus for the teachers. And uh, this, what you see on the screen now, the chess palace itself, it's kind of the heart of our program. You see the chess board actually, but it's a chess palace, right? But we also use chess board, of course, but sometimes we use the chess palace. And you see that the grid is over on the chess palace. So we use it for orientation. We use the numbers. You see that we uh, use uh, figures, graphics, like for the A file, it's apple, B like banana, C like cat. And on this, we play countless games with the kids. Uh, I just want to say one rhyme what we have. We have many if. I play chess all the time, super power will be mine. So there are a lot of little uh, stories and also rhymes for the kids to be more engaged and to be more happy and uh, the different informations, they connect one to another much easier. Also in my next slide, uh, I just want to give a, a small uh, insight about how we use, for example, we have the bishop, we have the knight, we have the rook, but also those characters, we gave them name and the drawings, what you see, actually it was developed by my sister. And we have different things connected to the knight or the bishop, the graphic, you can see a part next to it that it's, it's a simplified uh, writing, what we also developed. The B is for the bishop, is the starting initial. And what you see, that's a chess piece, the black one. Uh, also, uh, 
we want to show the layers of knowledge in different ways and it's just a small appetite uh, appetizer for you this is the queen the white queen we have a name right it's queen we have two of them in chess white and black we gave them personal names to them to the uh, queen quenessa and queen octavia we also use colors for our pieces for different knowledge uh, and skills to develop. Our queen is red. The queen itself in chess, it has the value of nine. And of course, on the chessboard, it has a movement, how it is able to move. And all six different kind of chess pieces are moving differently. So we are combining this with uh, different games and different things what they can use with kids in math, in writing, in reading, in storytelling, in teamwork, and many, many other things. So I hope it was interesting for you to get a little insight about how chess can be so powerful in education and catch the, the mind of the kids and to learn through chess in so many different ways. So the picture you see, I was visiting one of the schools where they do have chess palace and the kids are happy. You see also on their head, the pieces. And uh, I would like to ask all of you to think about it. You don't have to make a move immediately in the education with chess, but please think about it, how it could be implemented and how useful it could be for the next generation to have better minded kids and later on personalities, more balanced persons. And uh, we all need uh, to work a lot in order to make better education all over the world to make a better opportunity for teachers, what kind of tools, what kind of methodologies they have, what kind of projects they can be thinking of. And uh, I have to do my job, which uh, I'm promoting chess in education because I believe in that, that really it helps kids to develop a healthy mind. So I want to wish you all to stay healthy and be and stay optimistic. Thank you very much. Oh, very interesting. Judith Pulgar, thank you very much indeed.